In this video, we're going to look at configuring SharePoint users and groups. Authentication, that's who we are, is established at the web application level. We've already seen that the web application lets us have a number of different authentication schemes, maybe Active Directory, Live ID, Twitter, Facebook, a federated kind like that, maybe Active Directory federated services, maybe a SQL username and password in a SQL table. That's called forms-based authentication. Regardless how you sign into SharePoint, you end up just being a SharePoint user. And from then on, we can grant permissions or deny permissions only at certain levels within SharePoint. Membership of groups and the groups that we have available and the permissions that those groups have are created at the site collection level. That means every time I create a new site collection, I effectively get a new bunch of groups. The groups I get depend entirely upon which site collection template I use to create that site collection. A site collection template will say, when this site is created based upon this template, also activate these features. And those features will then go and create the extra groups that this template requires. So let's have a look at those default groups. If I go up to the site actions menu and down to site settings, I can head over to people and groups. Here we can see there's one user in here already. I can go to new and add users to this group. That way I can add new users. Over on the left hand side, we've got a list of the groups. If I hit more, we can see canonically which groups exist already in this site collection. So I've got the three main ones, home members, owners, and visitors. So it creates groups with, at the start of it, the name of this site that I've created. There are a few other groups that we get because I might have activated other features or we have certain services installed but the main ones are members, owners, and visitors. So how do groups and permissions work at the site collection level? So this diagram illustrates the point. Security in SharePoint is effectively access control list based. It's similar to that in NTFS and, and other control list types, but it's got a few differences. So it's really the intersection of three main things, the people and the groups that we would like to grant permission to the objects within our site collection that we would like to restrict or grant access to, and then the permissions we would like them to have. And the intersection of these three things makes up an access control list on a thing in SharePoint. However, it's not as simple as just granting permissions to people and things. Heading back over to SharePoint, let's go to Site Actions, Site Settings again, and we're gonna have a look at Site permissions. And of course here we've got our groups listed again. And if I want to see what permission one of these has, I can select the group and go up to edit user permissions. And we can see well it's got edit, I could also grant the home members group contribute, read, view, others, but edit is the default permission set that it has. So we don't grant groups or people permissions directly. We grant them one or more permission levels. So what's in a permission level? Back at the security settings page, if I hit permission levels, we can now see a list of the various permission levels that we get by creating the team site. I get full control and limited access, and these are really the only two genuinely built-in immutable ones as far as the site collection is concerned. If I click on full control, we can see that it has a number of permissions that are all checked. Things like manage lists, add items, delete items. Things like site permissions, such as manage permissions, manage website content, create groups, create subsites, manage personal views, update personal web parts, and so on. Although it's not configurable at the site collection level, we could choose to take some of these away in central admin and take them away from the entire web app. So full control is the one that's granted to owners by default, including site collection administrators. Limited access is another built-in one, and limited access is the one that's by default given to, for instance, anonymous users. And it allows the viewing of specific lists, libraries, list items, folders, or documents. If I scroll down, you can see I have the view application pages permission. So I can enumerate lists and so on the browse user information, use remote interfaces, use client integration, open, and so on. So not very much in the way of permission. So the other thing to note there is that SharePoint has 
precisely 33 different permissions that can be granted to groups and people via these permission levels. So a permission level, therefore, is a subset of these 33 permissions. I can't invent new permissions, although I can invent new permission levels that are a different set of those permissions. So let's look at design. Design is effectively granted to people who you would like to change the structure of our site. So we have manage lists, add items, of course, create alerts. We have not manage permissions, not create subsites. I can add and customize pages, change the themes and the style sheets. No security group permissions to create new ones. Can't even enumerate permissions. But what we can do is use designer and start managing master pages and page layouts. Then we have edit. And edit includes managing lists, adding items, editing, deleting them based upon the permissions I may have to other individual items in those lists. Opening, viewing, deleting, creating alerts, but not managing other people's alerts. Very little of the site permissions other than browsing directories, view pages, what else have we got? Browse user information, use remote interfaces, and so on. And also the ability to have personal views on web parts and to manage those. Then we have contribute, which is a commonly granted permission level that allows us to add, edit, and delete items, but not to manage permissions, create subsites, create groups, change the theming, use designer to manage alerts, none of that stuff. And then read, which has a few more than view only. So we have view items, open items, view versions. So that's a big change. Create alerts, view application pages. And you can look at these side by side and compare them with the other ones that sound read only. So view only, limited access. And you can see that there are big differences between them. And there's view only, which is view, view versions, create alerts, view application pages, use self-service site creation. This is an interesting one. By default, pretty much all authenticated users can create a self-service site collection if we enable those features. So those are our built-in permission levels. And as I said, only full control and limited access are really off limits for editing them. So let's say I wanted to have maybe a customized one. Let's look at design again. So design has got lots of properties, lots of these permissions checked. What it doesn't have is manage alerts, the ability to allow people with this permission level to add their colleagues to receive email notifications when things change in SharePoint. If I want to grant that, what I could do is just edit this one, design, and then hit save or submit. And now what we've done is we've changed what design means. So if somebody else is going to use and administer our SharePoint site, that could be disastrous if they have a different idea about what design means. So an alternative is we can copy our permission level and come up with one called super designers. And here I could grant this one the manage alerts permission. Well, that's better, but now I've got perhaps a coarse grained way of granting design plus my extra permission. So I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to show you my preferred method of adding a unique permission level. We can call it the alert management permission level, the ability to manage alerts on lists. There we go. And let's just add that single permission. And notice how it turns on all the other necessary ones that are implied by that. So now I'm going to save this extra permission level. And we could now give this to existing groups in addition to the design permission level. So let's have a go with that. So let's go back to site action, site settings, site permissions. Okay, so now I want to assign that permission level alert managers to a group, maybe home members. So let's edit the permission levels of home members and let's grant them alert management. 
So now mere home members can also manage alerts for lists. So in this video, we've had a look at the default groups you get when you create a site collection. And we've looked at the default permission levels you get and how to customize them and add our own. We've also seen the 33 built-in permissions, but this only applies at the top level of a site collection. So in a subsequent video, we'll see how to plan permission inheritance. Here ends the video.